Have you ever pondered on the depths of human cruelty throughout history? From the forest of the impaled to the agony of the iron chair, history is littered with severe punishments that etch themselves into the collective memory as stark reminders of our darkest inclinations. These ancient horrors, medieval torments, and inventive instruments of death and torture reveal not just the evolution of punitive measures, but the shifting sands of moral, social, and legal landscapes across civilizations. So, how do these gruesome practices influence the path toward the human rights and justice system we strive for today? Well, let's get started. And don't forget to let us know down in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover next. Ancient Horrors Throughout human history, various civilizations have devised an array of punishments to enforce laws and exert control, some of which are so brutal they're remembered as ancient horrors. Among these, impalement, scapism, and crucifixion stand out for their particular cruelty and the fear they instilled in the hearts of the people. Impalement, a method of torture and execution, dates back to antiquity and was widely used through the Middle Ages. It involved piercing the body with a long stake, either vertically through the torso or laterally, ensuring the victim's prolonged agony. This method was notably used by Vlad the Impaler, Prince of Wallachia, in the 15th century, whose fondness for this form of punishment earned him his gruesome nickname. Vlad often arranged the stakes in patterns for psychological impact, leaving a forest of the impaled as a stark warning to his enemies. The sheer terror of Vlad's forest of the dead became a lasting symbol of tyranny through the ages. Scafism, originating from ancient Persia, was another horrific method of execution, designed not just to kill but to torture. The condemned was placed between two boats and fed a mixture of milk and honey until they developed severe diarrhea, and then more honey was applied to their bodies to attract insects. Over days, as the victim lay immobilized, insects and vermin would begin to eat them alive. The combination of forced feeding, exposure, and insect infestation assured a slow and agonizing death. Crucifixion, though practiced by various ancient civilizations, is most famously associated with the Roman Empire and the execution of Jesus Christ, which imbued it with deep religious symbolism within Christianity. Victims were nailed or tied to a wooden cross and left to die a prolonged death from asphyxiation, blood loss, or exposure. The visibility of the crucified, often placed at busy roads or city gates, served as a powerful deterrent against rebellion and crime. The crucifixion of Jesus, however, transformed this instrument of death into a symbol of sacrifice, redemption, and love, highlighting a profound shift in its cultural and spiritual significance. Medieval Torments The medieval era, spanning from the 5th to the late 15th century, was marked by profound social change, religious fervor, and the establishment of justice systems that included some of the most harrowing forms of punishment. Among these, the wheel, the rack, and the flang stand out for their brutal effectiveness and the terror they inspired. The wheel, also known as the Catherine Wheel, was a device used for public execution by breaking bones and causing a prolonged death. The condemned were lashed to a giant wheel, where their limbs were smashed with an iron hammer or club to prevent any defensive posture that could mitigate the pain. In some cases, the shattered body was woven through the wheel's spokes and hoisted atop a pole for public display. This method varied across Europe, with some regions adopting more gruesome enhancements to prolong the suffering of the victim. The rack was a notorious device used primarily to extract confessions from prisoners. The victim was tied by their ankles and wrists to rollers at either end of a wooden frame. As the interrogation proceeded, the rollers were gradually moved apart, stretching the victim's body until the pain coerced a confession. This method was infamously employed in the Tower of London, among other places, with notable victims including Guy Fawkes and Anna Skew highlighting its role in both religious persecution and the suppression of dissent. Flaying, the removal of skin from the body, was another gruesome punishment employed during the medieval period. This method was used as a means of execution and post-mortem as a warning to others. The psychological impact of such a sight was immense, serving as a stark deterrent against crime or betrayal. The practice was not widespread, but was documented in various cultures as a punishment for treason or blasphemy. Instruments of Death and Torture 
Instruments of death and torture have evolved significantly over the centuries, with many designs specifically crafted to inflict maximum pain and suffering. Among these, the garrote, the iron chair, the pair of anguish, and the heretic's fork stand out for their ruthlessness and inventive methods of execution and torture. The garrote, a device designed to strangle or break the neck of the condemned, has a long history of use, particularly in Spain. Initially, it consisted of a simple rope and was later modified to include a metal band and a mechanism that could be tightened gradually. This method of execution became the standard form of capital punishment in Spain and its colonies, valued for its simplicity and the perceived quickness of death. The garrote was used for many centuries, from common theft to political offenses until its abolition in the late 20th century. The iron chair was a torture device that subjected its victims to extreme heat and piercing pain. Made entirely of iron and often equipped with hundreds of sharp spikes, a fire below it would gradually heat the chair. Victims were forced onto the chair and bound in place, ensuring that the spikes did not deliver mercifully quick deaths but prolonged agony. The chair's design allowed for the slow roasting of the victims, often in public squares, as a spectacle for crowds and a warning to others. The pair of anguish and the heretic's fork were devices used to punish those accused of heresy, witchcraft, or other crimes against the church. The pair of anguish was a metal device inserted into the mouth, anus, or vagina of the victim and then expanded to mutilate the internal organs. The heretic's fork was a bifurcated metal piece that was fastened around the neck, with sharp ends pointed at the chin and sternum, forcing the victim to hold their head in an upright position under threat of severe pain. These devices were not designed to bring about death, but to inflict maximum suffering and coerce confessions or recantations of faith. Punishment Beyond the Grave Punishment Beyond the Grave represents a darkly fascinating aspect of historical legal and penal practices, where the consequences of one's crimes were extended beyond death. Gibbeting and poena culé are two methods that vividly illustrate the length societies have gone to deter criminal behavior by making examples out of the deceased. Gibbeting was a form of post-mortem punishment that involved displaying the executed body of a criminal in a metal cage, which would be hung in a public place, such as a crossroads or the site of the crime. This method served multiple purposes. It acted as a deterrent to potential criminals, it provided a grim reminder of the consequences of crime to the public, and it denied the criminal a proper burial, which was believed to affect their chances in the afterlife according to some religious beliefs. The bodies could hang for years, becoming a macabre landmark, slowly decomposing in their iron prisons. In England, the Murder Act of 1752 made gibbeting a common post-execution practice for murderers, under the theory that the sight of a gibbeted body would deter others from committing similar crimes. This practice was not abolished until the early 19th century, reflecting a shift towards more humane penal practices. Poena culé, or the punishment of the sack, was a uniquely horrific Roman penalty reserved for the crime of parasite the killing of a parent or a close family member. The convicted person was sewn into a leather sack, sometimes with various live animals such as a dog, a rooster, a viper, and a monkey, and then thrown into the sea or a river. This punishment combined several elements meant to increase the horror. The claustrophobia of the sack, the terror of being enclosed with wild animals, and the slow death by drowning. It was not just a means of executing the guilty, but also a symbolic act, purporting to return the parasite to a state of chaos and non-existence akin to before their birth, thereby erasing their place in the social and natural order. The Evolution of Human Rights The evolution of human rights represents one of the most significant developments in the history of civilization. This progression reflects a growing collective awareness and rejection of practices once deemed acceptable. The harsh punishments discussed previously, while reflective of their time's values and societal norms, also underscore the long journey toward establishing universal human rights and justice systems prioritizing dignity, fairness, and compassion. Historically, punishments were not merely about retribution or deterrence, but were deeply intertwined with the era's prevailing moral, social, and often religious beliefs. 
They manifested authority and power, aiming to maintain social order and conformity through fear. The severity of these punishments reveals much about the fears and challenges of those societies, from the importance of social hierarchy and the need to deter criminal behavior to the use of public spectacle as a form of communal catharsis and control. Humanity's progress in human rights and justice can be seen in the gradual but persistent shift from these brutal practices to more humane forms of punishment, and, importantly, the development of legal systems that focus on rehabilitation, fairness, and the protection of individual rights. The Enlightenment period, with its emphasis on reason, individualism, and skepticism of traditional power structures, played a pivotal role in challenging the status quo and advocating for the inherent rights and worth of the individual. This philosophical shift paved the way for landmark documents such as the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which articulate the inalienable rights to which all humans are entitled. Remembering and studying these aspects of human history is crucial for honoring the victims of past injustices and ensuring that such dark chapters are not repeated. They serve as a powerful reminder of the capacity for cruelty and injustice under systems of unchecked power and the importance of vigilance in safeguarding human rights. This historical consciousness fosters a collective responsibility to challenge injustice, advocate for the marginalized, and continue building societies that recognize and respect the dignity and rights of all individuals. So, what historical punishment do you find most shocking and why? Please let us know in the comments section below and remember to like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to get notifications on the latest uploads on the channel. As always, see you in the following video.